Hello, lighting people. Mark Baker is on a mission to change the way that LEDs are made and sold in the United States. Claiming adverse health effects that affects a certain percentage of the population, he recently filed a lawsuit, a lawsuit against the U.S. government, the Food and Drug Administration. In light of that, we thought it would be a good idea to hear what's on Mark's mind, what's behind his mission, and the reams of research that he's prepared and entered into this lawsuit. So we're welcoming Mark to join us today for five big questions. Mark, hello, and thanks for joining us. Hi, Al. Thanks for having me on this show. I really appreciate it. You know, I'm so glad you're here, and I'm really interested to learn more about this situation, about this lawsuit, about this topic. Before we dig into kind of the nitty gritty details, let's just talk about the health effects first. In general, what are the adverse health effects that certain people uh, find relating to LEDs? Yeah, Al. So the first uh, health effect that is kind of well known is the blue light. So this is 450 nanometers on the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, the American Health, uh, American Medical Association published a report in 2016. So this is seven years ago already. It's about the time that I was personally being impacted by LEDs. But in that report, they were the first organization to start to let the public know, hmm, this blue light has some kind of impacts on our health. They'd actually had a report in 2012 that sort of alluded to it as well, but 2016 was the real eye opener. So uh, unfortunately, the lighting industry then attacked the AMA report. And, um, and so the AMA kind of backed out at that point. They haven't done anything since. But there are now thousands of studies showing that this blue light is really a serious problem. We should not be having blue light at night. So even during the day, it's hazardous for us, but it's kind of balanced out by the red light. So full spectrum sunlight has equal levels, more or less of blue and red. So while the blue is sort of damaging us, the red is sort of repairing us. And, but the switch to LEDs now go into the high color temperatures, the 4,000 Ks, even 3,000 Ks. That was a, just a really bad idea for our health. So you have photobiological health problems. So any like damage to your eye, macular degeneration problems, eye cell death, um, though that's one type, but then there's this circadian rhythm problem that's just really important. So interfering with our sleep and our ability of our cells to repair themselves, the hormonal issues. So um, this is causing great increases in cancer risk, diabetes risk, heart disease risk, mood disorders, even premature births and early mortality. So uh, with the thousands of studies now, that's one area that we need to be addressing is the color temperature. Um, but a lot of the colleagues that I work with that have come to me and for myself personally, it's the intensity, the luminance of the light. And this luminance is not regulated. So it's coming, this LED light is coming from a flat surface, not a curved surface, a flat surface. So luminance is the proper metric for the, for the intensity, the power density of the light, right? And this has not been studied. So those of us that are being impacted by this intensity are suffering seizures. We're suffering brain fog. We're suffering um, migraine headaches that last for days. Uh, we're, we're suffering all kinds of neurological uh, impacts that are preventing people now from leaving their homes. So they're, they're in danger. I lost my own job because of the LED lights. Other people have the same. They're now unemployed and dependent upon their you know, partners or whatever to go shopping for them, to go work for them. And we know the Soft Lights Foundation knows what the problem is. We now need to get the government to take action to protect us from this light. And this, this Soft Lights Foundation, that's, that's a nonprofit organization that, that you organize and run? That's right. So before yeah. I was a middle school math teacher. And so when these lights came out and I was no longer able to get to work, I started to research, well, what's going on with this weird light? So I created the Soft Lights Foundation as a nonprofit to share information. We built our website, softlights.org. And then we just started communicating with each other across the world. And other people helped me learn about what's wrong with this light. And I became sort of an expert on how it works. I communicate with other experts around the world, and we're just trying to pull everybody together to, to like, okay, it's time. Let's get something done here. 
let's go back to the you kind of uh, mapped it out with the uh with the, with the with the two different prongs and i'm sure this is more multifaceted than the way than the, than the for the time we have here but with you mentioned the, uh, the the blue light aspect but then also the intensity aspect which causes some of the the, the seizures and the days long headaches etc um, I, I'm assuming there was there was a long citation of resources that you entered in that lawsuit that we'll get to in a moment. But I'm assuming that there's there's data on on people like you who've suffered adverse side effects from this, and this isn't just an anecdotal collection of claims. There's there's, there's doctor doctors involved and in, and in, and in, in case studies on these different um, individuals who've suffered these adverse effects. Yeah, uh, and the, before I go on, I forgot. So I focus on uh, the spectral power distribution and the luminance, but a lot of people are really affected by the square wave flicker. So it'd mm. be uh, remiss of me to leave that out. So make, let's make okay. sure square wave flicker is also really devastating for a lot of people. Yeah. And we don't really know 100%, like, is it all three separately? Is it all three combined? We, it's not really been studied well enough. So I have, you do, know, you do know, you do know it's coming from the lights though, like absence of the oh. lights, those, those symptoms disappear. You put yourself in that environment and those, those symptoms present themselves. Absolutely. So wow. I've gone into a building, a grocery store, for example, and it feels like I'm suffocating. It's these led lights. It feels like I can't breathe. And as soon as I get out of the store, then I'm breathing again. Now it's not oh. oxygen, it's something else. Now, other people are suffering these seizures, and it's instantaneous because the light is so intense. Um, there is a person who I communicate with who is working on She did an EEG recently and uh, in a hospital setting, in a medical setting, and she's going to show that under the incandescent light, perfectly normal, under the LED flashlight, she can't talk. Wow. This is pretty when, serious. Yeah. When you were first going through these issues that affected your career the way you described what what was the doctor's prognosis back then when when this likely might have been the first case that they saw in, in your local area like like so i imagine when, when they're trying to assess this at first how did they arrive at this diagnosis and, and validate um that it's the lights causing all these adverse effects oh well the doctors don't they don't know so they just they brush you off um hmm. they you go to the doctors you go to the neurologist and they've never they don't know. It's not been trained in the medical community. You know, this LED light is so new. So that the medical folks have not had time to go through medical training and stuff and be trained on what's different about this light. So we get a lot of negative feedback like, oh, it's just in your head. Uh, but yeah. I can guarantee you that it's not in our heads because there's so many of us. And there's other things that what we call neurotypicals, they're not reacting the same way, but they're saying, hey, LED headlights they're too bright. <laughs> we can't see. There's too much glare. And that's, you know, sort of like should make you think, well, OK, what's going on with these lights? Why do we suddenly have this problem with glare? Right. So, yeah. yeah. When, when you were going through your issues years ago, what what were the most severe symptoms that you suffered as, as a math teacher that caused you to leave your job? So it might sound strange, but uh, I've never before in my life felt that there was evil in the world. OK, so when I when these lights started to come out, I was living in the San Francisco Bay Area uh, and I would try to go to work at school. I would be hit with these LED headlights, the daytime running lights, the floodlights, and it was the white intense. And it's really weird to describe it this way, but like the devil was shining this light. It was unnatural to me. So my brain was not absorbing or understanding. And I literally was telling myself, oh my God, is my the rest of my life going to be like this, suffering with this kind of attack, I would say. Um, so as I try, I was just trying to balance out because it was coming so fast. The people were buying the new cars with the LED headlights. In my neighborhood, we had soft, high pressure sodium lights. I come home one night and they've switched them out to 5,000 K LEDs. I was living on the second floor and I go into my apartment. This intense light is coming into my apartment, like lighting up my whole living room, right? I couldn't look out the window anymore. It was so intense. Mm -hmm. So it was debilitating uh, psychologically to think that my world had switched to this. And as I tried to fight and understand and try to make it go away, it just led to a mental breakdown. So I ended up in the hospital. And uh, they diagnosed me with mild autism spectrum disorder, which means that I'm particularly sensitive to that kind of 
you know, environmental conditions, lights and sounds, right? So I'd never yeah. known before that I was diagnosed with this. You know, maybe they're right. They're probably right. But um, it, they didn't say, oh, particularly it's LED light. Right. We've been the ones to figure out that it was LED light and that it's particularly it's a flat surface emitter with this high luminance. And it really just is more than our neurological system can tolerate. Let's let's transition to the to the lawsuit. Um, you filed it uh, in the U.S. federal court, and it's against the, um, the the Food and Drug Administration of the the U.S. And um, it may seem like an odd agency to sue, but based on um, based on what was written in there, and, and we don't need to go through all the gyrations of why we landed on the FDA. But you must have listed a dozen other agencies that kept on saying, sorry, wrong department. And then at least one of them or two of them pointed you towards the FDA. So I guess that's why you settled on the FDA, but uh, absent of, of a long discussion on FDA, let's talk more about the lawsuit and what you're trying to accomplish with the lawsuit. So what are your claims and what do you want the resolution to be? Um, so actually I might be the first person that figured out it was the FDA that's at the top of the food chain. So, I contacted these other federal agencies and I said, hey, according to statute 21 USC 360 HH through 360 SS, the only congressionally mandated or an authorized agency for LED products is the FDA. What do you say to that? And so there's this long list of letters I've gotten from all these agencies like, well, yeah, it's not us. We can't do it. That's the FDA. Now, they may be just saying that because they don't want to have to do some work. Mm -hmm. So somebody can fight that out. but. I agree. According to what I see in the law, it's the FDA. So that's the peak. So they're supposed to set performance standards. So the performance standards would be like the maximum on luminance, maximum on luminous intensity, maximum or not maximum, but the spectral power distribution that would be safe for us. And then flicker, you know, before it was sine wave flicker, now it's square wave flicker. And that's really bad. Where's the, you know, they, they have to set this. So according to all those other federal agencies, it's the FDA. So in June 12, 2022, the Soft Lights Foundation filed a petition with the FDA requesting that they comply with this law and publish these performance standards. So I got a performative letter back from them saying, okay, thanks for your letter, but we don't really know what to do, basically. We don't know what, it's complex. We don't know what to do. So I've been trying to get members of Congress, the senators, representatives. I did get two uh, US uh, representatives to write letters to the FDA. Uh, specifically for LED headlights. Hey, where's the standards for LED headlights? And they got no response from the FDA. So, you know, at some point you just give up and just say, okay, well, the kind of language that they speak is legal language. So I'm not, it's not a thrill for me to sue the FDA, uh, especially pro se, which is what I'm doing. But hopefully we can get them to come to the table, right? They can start saying what they're position is why. And if, if, if it's true that the FDA is the only congressionally authorized uh, agency to regulate LED products, then the Consumer Product Safety Commission can't protect consumers from, you know, those appliance indicator lights now are way too intense on washing machines and dishwashers. They're just over the top. What about lighting in schools for children? I mean, who's checked to make sure that's safe? What about LED street lights? They're way too intense. They're too blue for sure. Uh, who's regulating that? It's not the Department of Energy, although they said they are, because they wrote me a letter and said, well, it's not us, right? It's those so, guys so, over there. So, you know, I think it was Stephen Covey who said, start with the end in mind. So with this lawsuit, assuming that you've identified the FDA as the organization that does have the authority that you're seeking to, to have them do something, what do you want them to do? You'll be happy if this lawsuit ends with what? Hmm. Well, so there's a, a regulatory thing called the Code of Federal Regulations. So they have 1040.10 for lasers. They have 1040.20, et cetera. So I've asked them to make 1040.40 LED products. And then I also submitted additional petitions, 1040. Point whatever, 50 and 60 and 70 for LED headlights, for LED flashing lights, for LED street lights, because each product really needs its own set of regulations. I don't think one set of standards is going to work. Every, everything right. has a different application. So now it, it would be, it's going to be a huge deal because if, you know, the structure of the government's not really set up for this, to have this one agency, the FDA, creating regulations. According to the law, the statutes, they're supposed to reach out to the DOE. They're supposed to reach out to NHTSA. They're supposed to reach out to the OSHA and say, hey, we need standards. Let's work together. 
let's collaborate and then spill it. But those agencies are telling me we're not picking up the phone to call the FDA. The FDA has to call us. Oh, right. On. That's not right. a that's not a great way to work, guys. Just pick up the phone and say, let's work together and let's get this fixed. But they're waiting for the FDA. I, I like your approach to 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 be suggested it should be carved out and categor, categorized based on the different types of, of light, whether it's on appliances or street lights or indoor lighting, et cetera. Um, but, but just generally speaking, would you, whether it's an outdoor light or, or an interior light source, would you, would you want us to be living in say a 2,700 Kelvin world? I mean, I, I see the points on the flicker free aspect of it and the intensity aspect of it, but on the color temperature, solely on the color temperature, are you trying to get a certain Kelvin threshold as, as the top limits? The spectral power distribution has an impact on our health, that the, mo that the more blue it is, the worse it is. And if you're using a light because it's nighttime, you don't want blue. Right. So even a 2700K is maybe, you know, it didn't seem to bother us. But now that we've learned all this stuff or that the, you know, researchers have shown it to us that even that, but I'm comfortable with that. That's fine. Um, we kind of generally now advocate for sort of an amber light, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at night, the, the, the less blue and the more red that you got, the better. Uh, but it's also this intensity issue and it's also this flicker issue. And for individual houses, People can go and turn on their own lights, right? So that's their decision. But outdoor lighting, where you are subjected to this light, it's got to be safe. It can't be walking down the street and getting a seizure or a debilitating migraine because the uh, you know some government agency has installed something that's dangerous for you. You mentioned that this lawsuit is pro se, meaning you don't have an attorney representing you. You're 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 an individual citizen suing the FDA, and you're unrepresented by counsel. So you're actually filling out the paperwork and, and would be doing these these arguments in the courtroom when it gets to that point um did you did you pursue uh seeking counsel to help you represent you as, as an attorney yeah i've just hundreds of, of contact you know calling and emailing and stuff and nobody understands this it's physics you know so they're sort of confused about what it yeah. is they've been sold on the idea that this led light is energy efficient but it's not energy efficient it's just low quality um, but that doesn't mean I've stopped. So I'm still contacting right now. I'm a, a contacting the state attorney generals. Here's my lawsuit. I wouldn't mind some help. <laughs> it's just me. Okay. But, um, you know, sure, jump in. Help me with this. Uh, you know, get, let's get this solved together. You know, this is this is an interesting issue that um, I have a blind spot for this. I, I probably have heard anecdotally over the years that people suffer from these things. I remember I used to work for a lighting manufacturer who um, had a first generation set of light fixtures that replaced fluorescence and, and, and the customer got our brand new great LED fixtures. And, and I remember reading the email that they were, be, they were being called like migraine inducing light fixtures because there was one woman in the office who had an issue. And, and frankly, we kind of brushed it to the side and said, she'll just get used to it. And, um, but over the years, I've heard more anecdotes like this, Mark, and, and, um, you know, your story of, of being personally affected by this seems credible. And it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting angle to, to evaluate things. And, and, um, you know, it, it, I'll be, I'll be watching this lawsuit. I'll be watching this issue to see how it evolves. Cause you, you bring up some, some very interesting points and I look forward to learning more about it myself and to following, um, your, your litigation against the government. So thank you for sharing a, just a piece of your story and, 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 and parts of, uh, you know, some of the important factors that you're trying to, to inspire change with. I wish you good health and I wish you good luck. And I thank you for joining us for five big questions. I'll thank you very much. Appreciate it.